Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nihal, and I'll be moderating the session. Uh, your presenter is Safia, and she is bringing to you an uh, introduction to EV3 programming from Husky Robotics. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce me and Safia. I am a sophomore at Naperville Central, and I've been doing FIRST Robotics for five years. And now I want to explain how this presentation will go on. Right now, all of you are muted, but if you have a question, you can click the raise hand button in the participants tab so that we all know that you have a question. And once one of us calls on you, you can unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can use the chat if that's more convenient. Please use the chat and the reactions button in the reaction tab appropriately. We will be monitoring and recording this video. So now that that's out of the way, I'd like Safia to introduce herself and her presentation. All right. Yeah, so like Niha mentioned, I'm Safia Bompri. And just some a little background about me. I'm a junior on the Husky Robotics team. Um, I was on an FLL team from fourth grade to eighth grade. So like I do have a lot of experience in FLL. And specifically, I have like a passion on what we're going over today, which is EV3. And so basically, let's get started then. So you may be wondering what EV3 is. Well, basically, it's a block based programming. So that means it's not like all these complicated words and stuff, but it's more formatted for um, beginner users. So it's like block based and it a lot more visual and it helps you write out the commands for your Lego robot. Also, EV3 is sequential, is written in the sequential order. So like each action will happen at a time and then I'll move on to the next action. All right, now let's head into some actual coding. So the main part that we, or one of the most important blocks in EV3 is called the on start block. This is where you're gonna place all the actions that you wanna run when you start your program. So in simpler terms, anything that you want to run as soon as you click the start button on your program will be connected to this block. All right, so the first category of um, EV3 programming blocks that we're gonna head into are called motor blocks. These are blocks that all correspond to physical motors that are plugged into your EV3 brick and the different inputs that you can put into this block. So like the different information that you customize for each block, they will all be like power, which will control the speed, direction, which will obviously control like which direction your robot is moving in, motor port and motor type. And this is a big one that not many people know about, but um, when you're building your robot, each motor is gonna plug into a specific port on your robot brain. So in each block, you're gonna have to specify which port that you're going to be controlling with that block. And then finally, how long your robot is going to be doing whatever action. So for example, I'm going to want my robot to move forward for five seconds. And then we'll go into more about the different units of time that we can use. And then output's pretty straightforward. It's just whatever physical action that you highlighted in the block that you have customized. So the first move block that we're going to go over is called the tank drive. So I like to think of tank drive as it controlling each motor separately. So tank drive is, let's start at the beginning. Tank drive is meant for the robots who have two large motors that drive as wheels. So I don't know if you've seen this in earlier presentations, but that's pretty much every basic robot design. So when you're using the tank block, you can use um, this first input area for the speed for your first motor and then your second input will be the speed for your second motor and that and so basically by controlling those two you can either have them go straight by having them go at the same speed or you can turn by having one motor go at a faster speed and one motor go at a slower speed and then over here on the side are going to be the number of units for the specified time or distance so like i was talking about how long do you want to be doing that action so right now it's set to rotation. So this will be going zero rotation. So currently this block is set to move nothing. But if I were to set this number to like one or two, then it would go 50% speed on each motor for one rotation. The next move block that we'll go into is the steer block. And this controls your robot a lot like a car is driven. So um, yeah, you can see that steering wheel and that's kind of a nice visual to help remember that. But um, 
basically you're going to specify the motor port oh like i mean that's for all of them and then you're going to have a turn ratio and that turn ratio is going to be how much your robot is turning so like for example, if I were to put 50%, that would be a right angle turn because it's not the degrees it's turning, but it's the percentage that it turns. And then um, the third input is going to be speed, pretty straightforward, like we talked about in the last one. And then obviously your units and how long it's going to be doing whatever unit it is. All right. Now this next block is called a large motor block. This is similar to the other ones because it still controls a large motor, but it's different in that it only controls one large motor. So typically people will use this block if they are using one of their large motors for an attachment. And that allows you to control like one large motor individually instead of moving two large motors at once. So for this one, it's even simpler to look at because your first input is gonna be your power. And that's gonna be right here. So right now this block is set to go at 50% power. And then right, and then your second input is gonna be the amount or distance you're going. And so this symbols rotations, we'll go over the symbols later. So don't worry if you don't recognize it, but it's set for one rotation. And then the port that the motor that this block is controlling, the port of the motor that this block is controlling is port D. So whatever large motor plugged into port D will go at 50% speed for one rotation. And then this move block is very similar to the last one, except it works with a medium motor. So um, medium motors are kind of smaller than large motors and used for, again, attachments. And so for this one, it'll be controlling the medium motor in port A. It'll be going 50% speed for one rotation. All right, the next big category that we're gonna jump into are sensor blocks. Sensor blocks use the information that are gathered from sensors and they, and they send this information to, into the program to get a response from the program. So the three main sensors that are most used in EV3 and the three main ones that we'll be going over today are the touch sensor, which is right here, the color sensor, and the gyro sensor. Oh, I'm sorry, it's gyro, not gyro. So the first sensor block that we can go, that we're gonna go over is the touch block. So basically this touch sensor goes, it evaluates to true when the touch sensor is pressed in. So it basically senses what is up against your robot. You can use this sensor for like backing, backing into walls. And then as you can see here, you can do many different actions with this sensor. So these are a few of the web-based actions. And since this presentation is only an introduction to EV3, we won't be going over it. But if you want to take a picture of this slide for some extra information on the touch sensor block, feel free to do so. But we'll be going over it in the app later. Next is the color sensor. This takes in the light reflected from the map into the sensor. So basically, if you place a color in front of your sensor, it's going to sense whatever color that is and then return that value to the program. Um, when you're using color sensors, you want to be really careful so that extra light doesn't get let into the color sensor because um, that can often vary your readings and get some a color that isn't actually the color in front of it. And then finally, we have our gyro sensor. The gyro sensor measures the angle that your robot is in prior to its starting position. So for example, if my robot starts like this, but then somewhere in the middle of the program, it's like this, the gyro sensor will return 90 degrees because it was facing forward, but now it's facing this way relative to its starting point. So the gyro sensor is really helpful. Um, you'll go into this later, but it's helpful for like staying in a straight line, or just making sure that your, that your robot is always facing the correct direction. Okay, so that's the end of our sensor section. And next, we're gonna go into our loop blocks. Loop blocks are basically are, their main purpose is to repeat a certain set of code until a specific condition is met. So this can be helpful for situations that, in which you wanna do something until an action happens. So for example, if you have a mission on your field that where you have to keep like pushing a button until something comes out and you know how much time that's going to take, you can use a loop block to keep repeating that action 
instead of just writing out that action multiple times. The, first, the main loop block that is used in EB3 is called the while block. So if we were to talk in English instead of programming, this block would read, while this condition is true, do this action. So while my color sensor reads white, move forward would be an example. So that would be like, if you want your robot to like keep on going forward until it senses a black line. And again, this is integration with the color sensor. It would be like, while my color sensor is not sensing the black line, move my robot forward. And that would be a basic example and a common example of when to use your wild block. And this is your weight block. So this is like um, that example I was talking about earlier. I don't know if you remember, but um, it's used for when you want your robot to like kind of wait in a spot. So if you want your robot to press a button, but you don't want it to just press it and then leave it, you need to like press and hold that button down you would use your, your weight block to keep your robot still in that position. So for the weight block over here is where you're gonna enter your time and you would just enter your second. So right now, if I were to put this weight block in my program, my robot would stop for one second in whichever position it was before continuing on with the rest of the program. And this is again, a very useful and common block to know about. Okay, so that concludes going over our blocks. So now let's talk about more of some organization. And this is really important. You may think, oh, coding, I just need to know how it works. But no, you need to like also know how to organize because um, you need to have comments in your code because when you come across problems later, your comments will help you stay organized and concise and they'll help you know what each part in your program is for. So without comments, your code can get jumbled up and you might get lost when you try to go over and revise your code later. So comments are really crucial and you wanna make sure you're specific with your comments. So um, for example, if I had a block that is coding my robot, is telling my robot to go forward for five seconds in my comment, I would say in English, I would be like, go forward for five seconds. So I know exactly what that block is. And another useful tip is you could also say why it's going forward for five seconds. So like you could be like, go forward for five seconds to get to mission A. So you wanna make sure you're specific and clear with your comments. And that'll be really helpful for you later on. Next um, are some really useful problem solving skills. So coding can be very intimidating when you look at it as a whole, you're like, oh no, how am I gonna get my robot to do what I want? Um, but one skill that I found really useful in my um, experience with coding is called decomposition. And basically the main concept behind this is breaking down a big problem into small separate pieces so that you can focus on each individual piece at a time. So for example, if you need your robot to get from the starting area to the opposite corner of your mission board, instead of just thinking of it as a whole and all the intricate steps you need to take, break it down and focus on each step one at a time. So first I need my robot to go forward and then I need my robot to take a right turn. And by focusing on all those individual steps, it'll make it much easier and much more manageable to make whatever you need happen. And then another problem solving skill that's also really useful, although it's kind of contrary to decomposition, but if you do it right, it can work just the same. It's called abstraction. And this approach is instead of breaking your problem down, look at the big picture. Like you need to eliminate all the details that aren't relevant to what you need to solve. And then by doing that, you can focus on what's important in solving your problem. So instead of breaking it down, just look at the big picture as a whole. What are the main tasks that need to be done to accomplish or get over my challenge? And then another good tip to keep in mind is when you're coding, it's really easy to get unmotivated when something doesn't work because I know from my experience as a coder, and I'm sure um, all of my fellow Huskies know when something doesn't work, it, you, you can get down, but that is like part of the process. You need to expect for that to happen. But the biggest thing you need to remember when this happened is troubleshooting. You need to be able to pinpoint your problem. And that relates to what I said earlier about comments. Comments are really useful to help pinpoint your problem. So by pinpointing your problem, you'll be able to 
focus on what's going wrong and then you'll be able to focus on how you can improve it to perfect your program. Just remember, don't get unmotivated if something doesn't work. That just means you're probably on the right path. All right, so now we're gonna start our demonstration portion of this uh, presentation. Let me switch my screen real quick. All right. Can, can I get a thumbs up from all of you guys if you can see the new EV3 scene screen? Okay, yeah, I see Simi. All right, so basically this is your EV3 lobby. And when you wanna start a new program, you're gonna go over here to the plus button and hit new program. And that's just gonna create a new blank program. And like I was talking about earlier, here's your on start block where you need to place everything. And then we're gonna go down here this panel and get started. So let's get started first with the steer block. I'm going to drag it up to my on start block. And as you can see here, it's specifying the different motors that I want. So I want the large motors in ports B and C to be running. And then here, I want my rotations. I can set it to whatever number I want. So let's just say eight rotations. I want my robot to go far with this one. And then Okay, and then here I can set my power using this slide bar, or if you don't want to use a slide bar, you can always just type it in. Okay, I guess the typing isn't working right now, but yeah, you can use your slide bar to adjust your power. I'm just going to keep it at 50 because that's the basic power. And then here is another slide bar to work on your steering. So like I said, if we go to 50, that's going to be a perfect right turn. And then negative 50 will be a perfect left turn right there. And then negative 100%, that's gonna be a full turnaround to the left. And then positive 100, a full turnaround to the right. So that's kind of your basics with the steer block. Oh, and then, um, sorry, one thing I missed is if you don't want to use rotations, rotations is the standard that most teams use, but if you don't want to use rotations in measuring how far your robot can go, you can either turn on degrees. So um, obviously 360 degrees would be equal to one rotation if you want to do it like that. And that's like how, how many degrees each wheel is going, or you can do on for seconds. I want, this would be, I want my robot to go to the right at 100%, at 50% speed for one second. That would be what this block currently means. All right, so I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna delete it, and I'm gonna go over the tank block next. So with this block, like um, we looked at earlier, there are two different speeds, the power for the left one, and I can use this sliding bar, and the negative speed just basically means it goes backwards, pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna have at negative 50, and then let's do this one at negative 35. So right now, my left is going backwards more than my right. So it'll be, if you can imagine it, it'll be going like this. It'll be turning, but going backwards because that's how my powers are set up. And then I can customize however many rotations I want. 89's a bit much, that'd be like all the way across the board and more. So let's just do four rotations. And that would be how to manipulate your basic tank block. Let's get rid of this one and then go over these two real quick. All right, so this is my large motor block. I can customize the port that I want the large motor to control using these over here. And then like before, the rotations are the same. And then for this one, since it's only controlling one large motor, there's only one speed input. So I'm gonna have it be going really slow at 17 speed. That's what this, this would have one large motor plugged into port D going at 17% speed for one rotation. Let's delete this and go over our medium motor block. So this is the last of the move blocks that we'll be covering today and very similar to the large motor, it works pretty much exactly the same. Um, here's your speed or your power you can control it using the slide bar. 100% power, I want a strong medium motor. And then let's do seven rotations. And 
it's plugged into port A. That's the port that my imaginary medium motor is plugged into. Okay, so let's delete this and go over our loop and wait blocks. So like I said before, I don't know if you remember, um, this is our while block. So I'm going to write a simple code and explain it to you. So I'm going to want my robot to go straight at 50% speed until it senses a black line. So I'm going to go to color and then I'm going to go to black. So here, that's, I clicked on this and that opened up my, op my options for the color sensor and I clicked on color sensor. Right now I'm just going basic, so I'm just going to look at what color it is. And that's going to, and then I click on the color options and then you have all these different colors, all the different colors that will appear on your EV3 board and you can select any one of them. So I want black. There we go. And I could deselect this red, I guess, because red was set already. All right, so now what this while block is saying is that I want my robot to go straight at 50% power. One rotation, after each one rotation, it's going to check my condition. So it's going to go one rotation, it's going to check if it's a black, and then if it isn't, it's going to go back and repeat this whole block. And then once it is black, it'll move on to whatever is outside. And then over here is the port that your sensor is connected to. So make sure you also specify that. You want to make sure all your ports for your sensors and your motors are organized. So that is our while block. I'll let that stay there in case that was a lot to go over. So if anybody wants to take a picture of this basic setup or just think about it, I'll just leave that there. And then I'll put in our wait block. So our weight block is probably the simplest block in my opinion in EV3 because you just drag it to wherever you want your weight to or your pause to happen, and then you just click on right here your num your amount of seconds. I want my robot to go straight until it hits a black line, and then wait there for nine seconds. That's what this program right now is doing. So that's my weight block. Here is my while loop block, and I think that's all the blocks that we did go over. Yes. All right. 